Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today's video is going to be all about cybersecurity versus software engineering salaries. Okay, so we are using average salaries from Glassdoor just to give you guys an idea of the numbers that we're working off of, but we're also going to be giving our perspectives on base salaries, bonuses, stocks, salary growth, and everything in between. So just based off of Glassdoor numbers, the average salary for a software engineer is $108,249. And for cybersecurity, since Zero isn't just a general cybersecurity role, I decided to use cybersecurity analysts and cybersecurity engineers. Okay, so first thing we're gonna cover is base salary. And just for reference, I worked at a FinTech company, Luca worked at a fan company for our first roles. But our current roles, I'm currently working for a relatively later tier startup and Luca is working for a different fan company. <laughs> Oh, Manga, Manga company. So I think for cybersecurity in terms of base salaries, just out of people I know who are in cybersecurity, um, it depends on what role you go into. Because I know people who start on help desk who may make less than someone who's starting out as a cybersecurity analyst. But since we're talking specifically about cybersecurity analysts slash engineers, the average salary that I've heard people get are around 60,000 to the low six figures, so 100,000. And mm -hmm. It definitely doesn't start as high as software engineering, but I do think that it's still relatively high for a tech salary, yeah. considering, you know, if you're fresh out of college, fresh out of boot camp, and you have maybe just a few internships under your belt. Mm -hmm. For most people I know who are making 90,000 and above in cybersecurity, fresh out of college, they typically are the ones going to bigger cities like New York or like California, Bay Area, that kind of thing. So the cost of living is just more in those areas. So that's why the salaries are higher. But typically if they stayed in like my hometown, which is Philadelphia, most mm -hmm. of the salaries hover around 60 to $70,000, which is, I mean, still really high, but it's pretty, that's probably the average range that you'll see in like a typical city. Yeah, especially if the big tech doesn't even exist there. So like, you know, that's true. they don't have to really worry about like competing. For most tech companies, like especially the bigger ones, what they do is like, they pay you above the market. So depending on where you live, indirectly or directly determines what your base salary might look like. Yeah, so if you're working on like a typical tech company right out of college, you could expect anywhere between like 90 to like 120K base salary, depending on where you live. I think that's pretty normal. And I think in general speaking, base salary is the one thing that is really hard to negotiate with unless they lowballed you since the beginning. Cause like that's mm -hmm. something like they don't necessarily want to adjust as much. Yeah. So they would prefer to raise like your stocks bonuses instead yeah. of raising your base. Yeah, it's a lot easier. And uh, I think in general, that's because like if they adjust your base salary a little too much, too aggressively, other people who have been with the company for a longer period of time, I feel some type of way and it's harder to adjust their mm -hmm. salary. So instead of raising the whole band, I think it's more consistent to just like, you know, give it to you somewhere within that band range. So if you perform well, you can still increase your salary while you're working there, not necessarily have to worry about, oh, we can't give you a raise because you're already at the top of the band unless you get promoted. Because if your base salary is already so high, then they probably have to pay you way more down the line than someone has, who has a lower base. Yeah, just uh, one caveat. I did, I know I mentioned like 90 to like 120. Once again, that's mostly for like the bigger tech company that's like more mm -hmm. established, like even fintech companies. It's also very common to start up with like, you know, 60 to like 80K range, especially if you're working like locally for like your local market company. There's also pro and con to it because like you might be living closer to home. You don't have to necessarily worry about rent and uh, those companies might be safer. Like you might not have to work like, you know, 60, 70 coding hours. So like there's also like the flexibility aspect. I think for starting out with the fintech company that I worked at, I did not get a sign-on bonus, but typical ones I've heard about are about $5,000. They're not like crazy high compared to like the fan companies who get like five figure sign-on bonuses sometimes. I've also seen relocation bonuses that typically aren't also as high as Fang. It also depends on what you're working at with your recruiter. So personally, I didn't get a sign-on bonus or a relocation bonus. Yeah, Negotiated. someone I know yeah. did negotiate for a relocation bonus. So I really think it depends on a case-by-case -case mm -hmm. basis and what you're negotiating with your recruiter. Mm -hmm. But in terms of a end-of-year bonus, they definitely are significantly lower at corporate companies such as fintech companies. And they typically unless follow that. <laughs> yeah, unless you're a hedge fund. They typically only follow that 2 to 3% adjusted for inflation bonus unless you're getting a promotion. I'm also having 20% off all my cybersecurity career resources from June 1st to 15th, linked in the description below. 
a promotion, it probably would vary wildly depending on you know how far you are in your career, what role you're getting into, if it's a new team, etc. Just in terms of the annual end of year salary increase, it's probably only going to be about two to three percent of your salary, which is very different from you know the ten percent that you would probably see at a bigger tech company. In my current company, since again we were a startup, we yeah. still are. Um, we actually didn't have any end of year performance reviews until recently. So that is something that is going to be a thing this year. They give us like target numbers, I guess, that we can reach for um, based on our evaluations mm -hmm. or performance reviews. Those typically give you something like that. Um, I would assume at most companies that are tech based, they'll yeah. have some kind of target bonus rate and they'll try to get you that point depending on your rating. Yep, so I think bonus is uh, some sort of like underrated part of your total compensation. Because if you think about it, if your base salary, let's say is 100K, even 10%, that's like 10K. So you're already getting paid more than a company who may not offer you any bonus. So bonus is something definitely you want to ask about and uh, keep in mind. And uh, in general, I think if a, com a company either doesn't offer any bonus, right now, let's just talk about end of the year bonus. I will get into other aspects of bonus later. Some companies may not offer it. And uh, what I have seen mostly for entry level is about 10%, plus or minus five, of course. And uh, by performance base, I mean, depending on your rating for the year, your bonus might go up or down. It has a pretty big impact, especially if they offer you performance based bonus. So they might promise you 10%, but it's not a promise. It's if you do an okay job. And uh, there are other parts that to consider for bonuses, sign-on bonuses to either make up for your stock loss, like, you know, your stock may be still vesting at another company. They use it as a tool to, you know, leverage their negotiation. Bonus is something I think most companies are willing to negotiate about. So a lot of time, if you can't get a boost in base compensation, another company might offer you a bonus incentive just giving you a one-time payment. A lot of them have a one-year policy, like if you leave within a year, you have to pay it back. Speaking from my first company again, since it was a fintech company, I guess for some insight, it was part of the Fortune 500. It was it's a Fortune 500 definitely company. Definitely a Fortune and 500. I think so, right? Yeah, it's definitely. <laughs> yeah, basically they did give me stocks in the form of RSUs, which is probably the same thing as tech companies. Mm -hmm. So those are restricted stock units yep. and they're actual stocks and they'll give it to me and they'll vest for four years and yep. I'll Typical. get like 25% every year, yep. the longer I stay. But technically yep. they're in my account, but I can't do anything with them until they become vested and, and then they're mine. Yep. Um, and I still have to pay taxes on those. Of course. When they vest. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Basically my stock in my fintech company was about 20% of my salary just about maybe 15% vested every four years so that means every year I get about three to four percent of those stocks in my pocket after tax definitely not the most compared to you know like a big tech company but in my current company I'm getting stock options which is different from RCUs it's the paper money but that is also changing soon because we currently are a leader tier startup so that whole process is changing but I do have some stock options that are significantly more than RSUs that I got at my previous company so for my previous company I did not get any stocks when I signed my offer I only got them after I was already a year in the job and it was part of my performance review that I would get these restricted stock units in my current company I got stock options when I signed my offer yeah so yeah definitely very different um for the timing of when you actually get them. And do you know if you can get more stock every year or is it? Yeah, so moving time? forward, my company isn't going to be doing stock options and we're moving towards RSUs. Mm. And uh, I think paper money is mostly for pre-IPO or startup companies. And uh, from what I have seen based on my prior interviewing, a lot of these even startups allow the option to be early accessible. So that's like a good thing. And uh, at a bigger tech company, you know, it's more predictable. They just give you a fixed amount of cash and uh, depending on when you join, they divide that amount by the aggregated stock price. The result is how many shares you get. So it's pretty straightforward. So you actually get share. You can sell it, it's up to you. So pretty much they're giving you just like another way of paying you. Our next thing is salary growth. I would say growth at typical Fortune 500 companies is relatively slow. So at my previous company, we basically had title promotions and band promotions. So if you start out with a title, let's say at a fintech company, it's typically like an officer and then an AVP, which is an assistant vice president, and then a VP and then SVP, 
and then director, managing director. That's a typical title promotions, but there is no monetary value with title promotions. It's just a title promotion and it just, I guess, makes you feel like something happened. Um, but you don't get a actual salary promotion unless you get a band promotion, which I guess is a similar term to tech companies, but used a little bit differently. The band is only for our salary. So they're just salary bands. And basically there could be a higher band, but someone could have a lower title. And there are people with lower bands and someone could have a higher title. So your salary doesn't depend on your title, but it just depends on what band you're in. And the bands aren't always clear as to what's the highest. There are some restrictions on like how much, if you want to get a managing director title, then you have to be at least like band two or a band three. Typically there are different sets of promotions and you have to work towards both of them at the same time basically. And they all have different requirements. And actually there were a lot of people I know in my company who had maybe 10, 20 years of experience and we were getting similar salaries just because they started at the company earlier than me because they never left the company. They were just growing at that slow-ish 2-3% to 3 per year and if they got a promotion then maybe they'll bump it up like 5-8%, um, maybe 10% max but that's very high for the company that I used to work at. You typically won't see that kind of growth if you stay at a company and that is definitely why a lot of people kind of switch around especially the younger generation like millennials and and Gen Z. So just in terms of salary growth, I knew many people who made the same amount as me or similar salaries, but they had way more years of experience. And then in my current company, I believe there are like milestones to hit in terms of salary bands. I personally am not that aware of how to get to them because like not a lot of things are structured in a startup environment. So it's definitely an interesting difference compared to like a very structured corporate. But I do think that the salary range in my current company is definitely a lot higher than my previous company just because i guess we're a software company and it's very different from fintech where they value like security and engineering and like the tech side of things a lot more than a fintech company who values you know their finance people their their traders and stuff like that so it's just different perspectives so i think uh, uh most companies especially the bigger tech ones like the only salary growth big growth opportunity is if you get promoted or if you uh perform extremely above and beyond so if you perform extremely above and beyond, then you can expect a bigger annual at the end of the year salary growth. So let's say like on average inflation amount, like three to 4% on average, not talking about like recent years. And uh, if you perform really, really well, that number could double or sometimes even triple. I don't know how common triple is. A lot of these tech companies, they do have band. The closer you are to the top of the band, the less you can expect to increase. When you reach a really high band, pretty much like you have to get promoted. Otherwise, like you won't have a big salary salary growth. Sometimes if you perform really well already, your increase might actually not be as much. It could still, it could only be like 4% because like, you know, you're already getting paid at the next level. And uh, another one's like, they might grow you a little slower, you know, like 4% every year. And then suddenly you get promoted, boom, 20% increase. Now you're at the next band. Definitely like do your research. Level 5 doesn't really provide this type of information as well. So you really have to like maybe ask blind people and like, yeah. But in general, like it's generally speaking, your current base salary times about 20% to like 30%. So you can kind of approximate how much you can be making. Your initial sign out is probably the most that you will be getting, which is probably why a lot of people decide to leave or switch jobs after like, you know, every three years or so, because like you want to get that initial boost of the stock so yeah so i would say uh that's the typical grow at the tech company and uh if you're gonna negotiate my piece of advice negotiate one thing at a time and definitely do all the calculation always start with the base salary if you can't negotiate it ask for stock max and if you can't get more of that ask for bonus sign on bonus and then at the end after you negotiate all that ask for relocation bonus <laughs> So it's a separate topic. You don't want them to accidentally be like, oh, by the way, relocation bonus is 10K. Like, see, your first year compensation is this amount plus the relocation. Like, you know, that that's not necessarily it. Because like, you want to negotiate the other aspect first and then go to the perks. So yeah, that's my uh, advice if you thinking about which one you should negotiate first. There needs to be a course called Negotiate with Luca. He definitely is very good with like negotiating at terms like that. I usually negotiate like one round and that's about it. And that already takes so much out of me. You need to negotiate like Luca. It could be three to four or five rounds of negotiations. 
and he may still not accept your offer so <laughs> be like luca guys all right guys thank you so much for watching if you like this video please give it a thumbs up and subscribe and turn on post notifications i post videos every wednesdays and sundays at 12 p.m and if you guys have any questions please feel free to drop them in the comments below and feel free to also drop any questions for luca of course and he'll also get back to you guys but yeah thank you guys again for watching and hopefully we'll see you guys in our next video bye, bye.